ألف لا ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another show of Alif Lam Mim the Quran as it should be recited and if you're joining us for the first time this show is catered for you all at home to learn the Quran and with us to help us learn on this journey is our Sheikh Shu'aib Ali and our students both Nabil and Muhammad may Allah Azza wa Jal bless them both let us give them salams before we begin Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh How are you? Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Assalamu alaikum Nabil how are you? Wa alaikum assalam alhamdulillah May Allah bless you Assalamu alaikum Muhammad you alright? Alaikum assalam Yeah I'm good alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah So this show inshallah for all those at home is a show which is broken into four segments and the main topic of the show, inshallah, is one in which we want all of you to learn the Qur'an. So we've broken it into four main segments. Now, the first segment is one in which we learn uh, a metan which deals with the science of tajweed. And it's something which is very simple, a metan which is very simple, a, a text of poetry that explains to us the basic rules of tajweed. Thereafter, in the second segment, we we'll actually go today through Surah Naba. Uh, in Juz Amma, inshallah, we'll be reading some of the ayat and we'll actually be going through uh, the recitation with the students and thereafter in the third segment we'll actually be going through the meanings and the gems and the heartwarming reminders attached to the verses within this surah and in uh, the, the last and final segment inshallah we would open up the calls for all of you to call in and to read from either the Metin or the Quran inshallah but before we start we would actually like to um, ask for our Sheikh to make a dua for our brothers and sisters who had been killed in the atrocity that took place in New Zealand in Christchurch, inshallah. So before we begin, we'd like for, to ask Sheikh Shu'aib to make a dua for our dead. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, hamdan kathiran, tayyiban mubarakan fih. Mil as-samawati wa mil al-ardi wa mil ama shi'ta min shay'in ba'd. Ahl al-thana wal majd, ahaq ma qala al-abd, wa kulluna laka abd. اللهم صل على نبينا محمد في الأولين وصل على نبينا محمد في الآخرين وصل على نبينا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم اللهم تقبلهم عندك شهداء اللهم تقبل شهداءهم واشف مريضهم اللهم اجعلهم عندك في عليين مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا اللهم إنهم قد قتلوا غدرا وظلما يا ذا الجلال والإكرام فأكرمهم في جنات النعيم اللهم ما كان منهم من إحسان فزد فيه يا رب العالمين وما كان منهم من إساءة فأنت الغفور الرحيم اللهم أكرم نزلهم ووسع مدخلهم واجعل قبورهم نورا وروضات من روضات الجنات وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy on all of our dead and may Allah Azza wa Jal uh, ha grant their family sabr and patience all of those who passed away in Christchurch in New Zealand and our dead, subhanAllah, they are shuhada. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant them the highest ranks in Al-Firdaus. And inshallah, we're going to go straight into the metan now, inshallah. And we're going to focus on uh, the verses 10 and 11 of the poem of Tuhfat al-Atfal, inshallah. So join us. The metan is online, inshallah. You can down download it. So let us begin, inshallah. Inshallah. Imam Rahimahullah Tabarakatullah said, Lakinnaha qismani qismun yudghama Fihi bighunnatim biyanmu'u lima إلا إذا كان بكلمة فلا تدغم كدنيا ثم صن وننت لا لكنها قسمان قسم يدغما فيه بغنة بينمو علما إلا إذا كان بكلمة فلا تدغم كدنيا ثم صن وننت لا جزاكم الله خيرا شيخ we like as well for our students perhaps to read after the Sheikh as well, inshallah. لكنها قسمان قسم يدغما 
لكن ها قسمان قسم يضغم فيه بغنة بينمو علما فيه بغنة بينمو علما إلا إذا كان بكلمة فلا إلا إذا كان بكلمة فلا تدغم كدنيا ثم صنوان تلا تدغم كدنيا ثم صنوان تلا Jazak Allah khairan, Sheikh. May Allah Azza bless you. And just for those perhaps who are at home wondering what does this actually mean, then the translation, inshallah, will appear on your screens for these two verses of poetry, inshallah. And it's specifically speaking about the second rule which we took last week, inshallah. And we'll ask Sheikh Shaib to give us further description and translation. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillahi wa salam wa amma ba'd. Akhadna al-hukma al-thani min ahkami nuni al-sakinati wa al-tanween wa huwa al-idgham wa alimna anna hurufahu yarmilun. So last week we took the second rule of the Noon Sakin and Tanween and that was Idgham and we knew that its letters were six letters and those letters were put in a word Yarmalun. وَعَلِمْنَا أَنَّهُ إِذَا جَاءَتْ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ نُونًا سَاكِنًا أَوْ تَنْوِينًا وَبَعْدَهَا حَرْفٍ مِنْ حُرُوفِ يَرْمِلُونَ أَدْغَمْنَا أَدْخَلْنَا النُونِ السَّاكِنَ وَالتَنْوِينَ فِي هَذَا الْحَرْفِ فَلَا نَقُولْ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ إِنَّمَا نَقُولْ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ so we've agreed as well that inshallah if there comes after a noon sakin or a tanween any of these six letters of yarmalun then we merge the noon sakin or the tanween into the one of these six letters inshallah so we wouldn't say man ya'mal we would say may ya'mal al-an inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala nashra'u fi sharhi aqsam huruf al-idgham fa al-imam qal lakinnaha qisman أي أن حروف الإدغام يرملون تنقسم إلى قسمين إدغام بغنة وإدغام بغير غنة. And now there's a subcategory in in relation to this rule of إدغام is that there's these letters يرملون are broken into two categories إدغام with غنة and إدغام without غنة. ما هي الغنة صوت اللذيذ يخرج من أقصى الأنف وهو الخيشوم ومركب في جسم الميم والنون هذه الغنة. Now what is غنة غنة is a sound that comes out of your nostrils uh, and this is ghunna. It's a sound that comes out of your nostrils so it should be a sound that you feel coming out of your nostrils. قال الإمام رحمه الله لكنها قسمان أي حروف يرملون تنقسم إلى قسمين. And the words يرملون are the word يرملون its letters are broken into two categories. قال الإمام قسم يدغم فيه بغنة القسم الأول تدغم فيه النون الساكنة والتنوين بغنة مقدارها حركتين. So the first category are those letters which غنة is applied to them so that you have to make sure that you hold these letters for two حركات. الإمام said بينمو أي هذه الحروف هي حروف ينمو فأخذنا من حروف يرملون أربعة أحرف الياء والنون والميم والواو. And these four letters, insha'Allah, are yanmu, and these letters are ya, noon, meem, and wo. And in these letters specifically, this is where idgham would be applied. Ulima ay ulima dalika wa urifa عند العلماء والقراء. And this is something which is acknowledged and established with the scholars and the reciters of Quran, insha'Allah. And we're going to go into the second category, insha'Allah, of idgham after the break inshallah so join us after the break we'll be focusing more on the metan and understanding what really is idgham and understanding its two categories and those two categories are one which has letters have a ghunna and one which the letters don't have a ghunna قبل الامثلة عرفنا ان اقسام الادغام قسمين ادغام بغنة ينمو ماذا بقي؟ بقي حرف الله مرة وهو ادغام بغير غنة so and now we've learned already that um, that there's idgham and there's two categories of idgham and that the one that we focused at, at the moment was that of which um, the four letters of yanmu, ya, noon, meem and wo, these four letters of the phrase yarmalun have idgham applied to these four letters and what is idgham? Idgham is a sound that comes from the nose which you hold for two harakat i.e. a harakat is one which it, how long it takes for you to outstretch your finger inshallah and that is idgham. نأتي لي أمثلة لهذه الحروف مثلا ينمو أول حرف هو الياء نون ساكنة بعدها ياء مثل من يعمل سأفعل شيئين أول شيء أدغم النون في الياء مي ثانيا غنة بمقدار حركتين تخرج من الأنف من يعمل من يعمل 
Excellent. So let's take the first letter, for example, of Yanmu is Ya. So Men Yamal. After a noon second, there comes a Ya. So the first thing we do, there's two things we have to do. The first thing we do is we join the nu, uh, the meme to the Ya. So May, May. And then we apply the Gunna. And this is the sound which comes from our nostrils and we hold it for two harakat. So we say May Yamal. مثال آخر مما من ما أول شيء أدغي من نون في الماء في في الميم مم ثم غنى بمقدار حركتين فتصير مما. Excellent. Second example now we have of من ما. So after the noon second there comes a meme. So the first thing that we do because it is one of the letters of يرملون and specifically ينمو. So we join it first. We say مم. And then we apply غنى because it is of the letters of ينمو and we hold it for two harakat and that is the غنى مما مثال أخير أذكره قال قال الله عز وجل إن المتقين في جنات وعيون جنات تنوين نون زائدة وعيون واو ماذا أفعل أفعل شيئين أول شيء أدغم التنوين في الواو فأقول جنات ثاني شيء غنى بمقدار حركتين فيصير النطق جنات وعيون. Excellent. And finally, the last example, focusing on the idgham with غنى, is the example of جنات وعيون. So there is a جن. So there there's a tenween at the end of جنة. Now we said that if there comes after a tenween, any of the six letters of يرملون, and in this instance there we have a وو. And now wow is one of the four letters of idgham, yanmu. So then we join it first. So we do jannatiyun, jannatiyun. Jannatiyun. Oh, be mad al noon. So jannatiyun. So, and then we apply the gunna by holding it for two harakatat. Jannatiyun wa uyun. Antaqil ila sharh al bayt al ladhi ba'dah. Now we're going to the, the, the 11th verse of the poem that we've learned today, inshallah, and the translation was just up on the screen, and we'll focus on that now. قال الإمام رحمه الله تبارك وتعالى إلا إذا كان بكلمة والمعنى لا يكون الإدغام إلا في كلمتين فإذا جاء من كلمة واحدة أظهرنا ويسمى إظهارا مطلق فقال الإمام إلا أي لا تدغم إذا كان أي وقع النون السكنة أو الحرف الذي بعده في كلمة واحدة. So an important point is here that he said except if this occurs within one word. Now what does this mean? It means that the rule of idgham cannot be applied within one word. It has to apply within two words. So let me make that clear إن شاء الله and the Sheikh will perhaps explain it to us. إيه ولم يقع هذا في القرآن إلا في أربع كلمات فقط وقع فيها نون ساكنة. بعدها حرف الياء أو الواو أربع كلمات سأقولهم الآن في القرآن حكمهم ماذا؟ حكمهم الإظهار وليس الإدغام السبب لأن الإدغام لا يكون إلا من كلمتين وقد وقعت النون الساكنة والحرف الذي بعده في كلمة واحدة So إن شاء الله Now the, there are situations in the Quran where a noon ساكن has appeared and then a wow or any of the letters of Idgham have appeared after it in one word. However, this doesn't mean that Idgham is applied. No, because the condition is for Idgham to be applied as a rule that there has to be two words for Idgham to actually happen. So now there's four letters, four words that are in the Quran where it can appear to the reader that they are Idgham, but they're not. But they're not. Why? Because uh, they appear in one word. The rule of Idgham appears in one word and for that reason, it's not idram, it's idhar. And we'll make this clear, inshallah, with explanation. الكلمة الأولى الإمام قال كدنيا دنيا الدنيا حيث وردت في القرآن نون ساكنة بعدها يا إياك أن تقول دنيا تقول هذا إدغام بغنة لا لأنه وقع في كلمة واحدة فقل الدنيا وأظهر النون لأن الإدغام لا يكون إلا من كلمتين. So, for example, one of these words are دنيا. The Sheikh mentioned it in the translation, as in the words دنيا. So now dunya, if you look at it, there is a, a straight after the noon second, there comes a ya. Now, uh, it's not idram. Why? Because dunya is one word. And for idram to take place, the, the, the noon second or the tenween has to appear at the end of the first word. And then the letter of idram has to appear at the start of the second word. So we shouldn't say 
dunya. That's wrong. It should be dunya. Dunya. قال الإمام ثم صنوان الكلمة الثانية صنوان وغير صنوان وهذا وقع في سورة الرعد صنوان نون ساكنة بعدها واو إياك أن تقول إضغام بغنة فتقول صوان لا الحكم إظهار صنوان أظهر النون ويسمى إظهارا مطلقا لأنه وقع في كلمة واحدة and the second word that appears in the Quran is صنوان Sin wan and it appears in Surah Ra'd, that is the 13th chapter of the Quran. Now, we shouldn't read it as Sin wan, that would be wrong. It should be Sin wan, and this means you make Idhar of the Noon, even though a woe comes after it. Why? Why, everyone at home? Because we said that the Noon Sakin and the letter of Idgham appeared in the same word. And this means that idgham can't appear within the same word. And for that reason, we read it as sinwan, as idhar, reading the noon clearly. Al Imam qal tala, ay, hunaka kalima talat. Kalimatan talat hadihi al kalima. Wahiya, al kalima thalitha bunyan, haith warad fil Quran. Noon sakina ba'daha ya idhar. So, and then the Sheikh mentioned that the last uh, line of this poem, he said tala, meaning that there's more examples in the Quran. And two more specifically, and one of them is Bunyan. Bunyan. Now, if you look uh, after the Noon Sakin, there is a Ya. A Ya. But however, because the Ya appears in the same word as the Noon Sakin, there is no Idgham, but rather there is Idhar. أما الكلمة الأخيرة فهي قنوان وقد وردت في سورة الأنعام قنوان دانية نون ساكنة بعدها واو الحكم إظهار لأن الإدغام لا يكون في كلمة واحدة. And finally the last word is قنوان and this appears in سورة أنعام in سورة أنعام الأنعام. So the point is inshallah for everyone is that because these four letters have an exception why do they have an exception? They have an exception because the letter of إدغام comes after the noon sakin in the same word and idgham as as part of its rule is that idgham can't appear in one word it has to appear within two separate words so that's why these four word four words have an exception in the quran inshallah and they have the ruling of idhar idhan akmalna al yawm al hukm wa al mulakhas katali idha jaa fi kitab allah noon sakin aw tanwin wa jaa ba'daha wa ahad huruf yanmu wa hiya arba'at ahruf madha naf'al nudghim an noon sakin aw at tanwin fi hadhihi al huruf bi ghunna fa naqul man ya'mal illa arba' kalimat faqad dunya sinwan qinwan bunyan wallahu a'lam so to summarize inshallah we've taken a subcategory of the rule of idgham and we've stated that now that there are four letters of the phrase yarmalun which come in the phrase yanmu where ghunna is applied to these letters and that is ya noon waw and meem so in these four letters we apply the ghunna with the idgham and we hold it for harakatain and we, with exception to four words in the Quran, they are Sinwan, Qinwan, Bunyan, and Dunya. Inshallah. So we're going straight into our sex, uh, second segment, Inshallah. And that is one, Inshallah, where we would ask for the Shaykh uh, to read uh, Surah, a Surah for us. And specifically today, Inshallah, we'll be focusing on Surah uh, uh, Naba. So we'll give you some time, Inshallah, at home to get your Qurans ready, Inshallah. Surah Naba is the first Surah of Juz Ammah. And we're going specifically into the surah. And we'll be reading approximately today a half a page, about 16 verses of this surah, inshallah. And we're actually going to start the recitation straight after the break, inshallah. We'll give you all enough time, inshallah, to get your Qur'ans ready, to prepare your, your children as well, inshallah, perhaps if they're following us in this show, inshallah, as well as yourselves and our students, inshallah, to get ready as well, inshallah. If you're wondering where you can access the metan from, inshallah, then the metan of Tuhfatul Atfal, what we are just studying now, can be accessed on the Iman channel website, on, uh, on the particular website, which is imanchannel.tv forward slash shows forward slash alif lam meem. We'll be focusing on a surah from Juz Amma and specifically Surah Naba. So please do open your Qur'ans and we would ask for our Shaykh to recite from Surah Naba thereafter for the students to recite immediately after him insha'Allah ta'ala. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Amma yatasa'alun 
Anin nabail azim Allazi hum fihi mukhtalifun Kalla sayalamun Thumma kalla sayalamun Alam naj'alil arda mihada والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات ألفافا Jazakum Allah khairan, Shaykh, for your blessed recitation, inshallah. would like as well for our students, inshallah, to recite bin alayhi ta'ala, Shaykh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amma yatasaloon. Amma yatasaloon. Anin naba il azim. Anin naba il azim. Alladhi hum fihi mukhtalifoon. الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادًا وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادًا وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادًا وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتًا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات ألفافا وجنات الفافا جزاكم الله خيرا to both our Sheikh Shuaib and our students Nabil and Muhammad. May Allah bless them all for their blessed recitation, inshallah. 
And just so that everyone's aware, inshallah, that this show is catered for all of you at home, inshallah. Hence the reason why we have our students here to make this a, a learning experience for all of us at home. For every single one of you at home, inshallah. And that's why that we ensure that the teacher recites and then the student recites immediately after the teacher, inshallah. And this is one in which a way which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would adopt, inshallah. And just uh, perhaps we would ask as well that there was a particular rule, just habben wa nabata, just to mention the point that we mentioned with the two words. Habben is one word. Now, after the ten ween, there came wa. So then we joined it habbel, and because it was one of the four letters of yen mu, we made it, we had to, we had to apply gunna for two harakat. So it's habbel wa. So that was an example as well, inshallah, of what was on the screens on the Quran specifically, inshallah, to, to act for, so that you can actually visualize what the rule of idgham with gunna actually meant, inshallah. We'll now actually ask everyone at home, inshallah, to call in if they have any questions specifically pertaining to the surah of an naba The number to call in is 0203 515 0769. It's 0203-515-0769. I believe our students have some questions, inshallah. Mohammed, do you have a question? Um, so I wanted to ask, inshallah, uh, why is the kalla uh, sayalamun? It's repeated twice. So it says kalla sayalamun, and then Allah says thumma kalla sayalamun again. No. هذا بالتهديد والوعيد. كررت في لغة العرب لأجل التهديد. أي سيعلمون سيعلمون. كلا سيعلمون هم ينكرون البعث. ينكرون أنهم سيبعثون. فالله عز وجل يقول لهم كلا سيعلمون عندما يرون العذاب. سيعلمون أن البعث بعد الموت حقا وسيعلمون ذلك فهذا من التهديد والوعد التكرار مثل وما أدراك ما القارع ثم ما هذا التكرار يدل على الوعيد من الله تبارك وتعالى So إن شاء الله uh, Why is كلا سيعلمون That phrase repeated twice in this surah It's repeated twice specifically because um, سبحان الله because Allah is actually made a promise about a great event now and Allah he wants to make it known to the non-believers that deny this event that this event is going to take place whether you like it or not and that's why Allah is establishing a fact that Allah's promises are true and Allah's uh, um, uh, explanation of future events will occur inshallah ta'ala we'd like to take a question as well from Nabil I have a question, inshallah. So, uh, in this surah, why does uh, Allah you know, make a lot of references to nature, like the night and the day, and then sleep, and then uh, the fact that there's pairs created amongst you? Excellent. Allah Azza wa Jalla dhakara qudratahu wa rububiyyatahu annahu khalaqa al-mawt wal-haya wal-naw wal-layl wal-shams sirajan wa haja wa anzal al-matar li yuthbita lil-kafirina anna al-ba'atha haqq wa anna al-lazhi فعل هذه القدرات العجيبة قادر أن يحييهم مرة أخرى الله أعلم So the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a lot of his uh, creation or the signs of how he created a lot of different things in this specific surah is to show the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the majesty of his lordship and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would resurrect us on the day of judgment by showing us how great he is through creating his creation and pondering on the creation. Through that we would know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala undoubtedly would resurrect us on the day of judgment. ta'ala, inshallah. Also we'd like for Shaykh to go into a translation, uh, a brief tafsir no. of perhaps some of these verses. Naam. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam wa sallallahu wa ba'd. Bada Allahu Azza wa Jalla al-Sura bi su'al. Al-Kuffar wa munkirin al-Ba'ath kanu yatasa'aloon. Hal Allah... يستطيع أن يحيينا مرة أخرى بعد الموت فقال الله عما يتساءلون على ماذا يتكلمون هؤلاء So initially the disbelievers they had a uh, they perceived that there was no such thing as a day of judgment or that they would be resurrected so then and they would have a great discussion amongst themselves and Allah actually addressed their mindset their concept their belief by saying what is it that they are questioning themselves regarding فأجاب الله قال عن النبأ العظيم أي يتساءلون عن النبأ العظيم والنبأ العظيم الشيء العظيم وهو البعث بعد الموت. Then Allah says that they are asking about the great event that will occur. Now what is this a great event that would occur? It is none other than 
the resurrection after we pass away on the day of judgment. الذي هم فيه مختلفون أي منقسمون فانقسم الناس إلى قسمين مؤمن به وكافر العياذ بالله. So there's two groups in regards to uh, the day of judgment. There are those that disbelieve in it and there are those who believe in it solely. So Allah, he, 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 he broke these two groups into different categories and some disagree about it and some believe in it and they differentiate between the believers and the Muslims, inshallah. Join us in the next segment, ta'ala. We'll be focusing on more of the meaning of this surah, inshallah, because the Quran was revealed not so that we could just recite it, but rather so that we can ponder on its verses. Join us after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Naam, alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu wa salamu wa Allahu azza wa jalla ayyuh al ikhwat al kiram wa akhawat bada al an يثبت قدرته في مخلوقاته العجيبة من إنزال المطر وخلق الجبال وخلق الليل والنهار وخلق الشمس ونحوها فالذي صنع كل هذه العجائب قادر أن يحيينا مرة أخرى بعد الموت سبحان الله So Allah is actually showing the, his power and his greatness by actually showing us how he created such great things. So he sh he's telling us how he created the mountains, how he created the sky and how he created the sun and the moon and how he created many things. And all of this, why? To establish the fact that the one who created all of these things, all of these things is capable to resurrect us on the day of judgment. ألم نمهد الأرض ونبسطها حتى لا تضطرب بنا ولا نتساقط من عليها. So Allah then mentions in the Quran and did we not make the earth as a flat sort of platform so that we don't fall off its um, surface or that it's not hard for us to sort of travel along it. والجبال أوتادا ألم يجعل الجبال راسية تثبت الأرض حتى لا تضطرب and likewise, Allah, he mentioned that he made the mountains as pegs, i.e. As, as pegs that are holding firm the structure and the plates of the earth so it doesn't shake and cause any disturbance. <laughs> And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in pairs and that he created us human beings in pairs in a sense that there, there is a female and a male, a spouse, a husband and a wife. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he made our sleep as a rest, as one in which we don't move. We are not active. We are literally inactive. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made the night as a covering in one in which we find rest within it. So it's not one where uh, there is light but rather Allah he covers us with uh, darkness so that we can find rest in this particular time of the day and that he made the day as a, a means for seeking a living so that when the day comes and the light is about then we can see we can move around we can actually seek a living and this is why Allah created the day and of the amazing ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he made the sky seven levels so he created seven levels each uh, uh, at every level there is a level above it and a level above it into a complete seven heavens and Allah so and he made as well the the, the sun 
the sun as a, a burning lamp. Yeah, and he put therein a burning lamp in a sense that it is something that it's light, it encompasses everything and it makes it for us a means of one in which we can pursue our activities in the day. وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَا أَنْ ثَجَّاجَةً وَمِنْ قُدْرَتِهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى أَنْزَلَ مِنَ السَّحَابِ مَا أَنْ صَبَّهُ صَبًّا يَتْبَعُ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضًا إِنَّهُ الْمَطَرِ and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down the rain clouds, pouring water in abundance, in great abundance. And that's why the water is one in which it actually brings life to, these, to, the, to the vegetation. لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ هَذَا الْمَطَرْ لِيُنْبِتَ بِهِ الزَّرَّ وَالْحُبُوبِ مِنْ قَمْحٍ وَغَيْرِهَا and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down this rain so that it can bring forth from the earth grains and vegetation and all sorts of fruits and things that we would actually eat and use for our um, livestock. And gardens and, and gardens of entwined growth, meaning that these gardens, that within these gardens there are various types of different fruits which we would indulge in and seek pleasure in eating them. And this is of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إذن أيها الإخوة الأخوات الله عز وجل يثبت ربوبيته في خلقه العجيب الذي خلق كل ذلك قادر أن يحيى العظام قادر أن يحيينا مرة أخرى وأهل الإيمان يؤمنون بالبعث والنشور والحساب ويوم القيامة ومن أنكر ذلك وجحده فليس له من الإيمان شيء والله أعلم. So to summarize is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is establishing within these verses that His greatness and His capability of creating all of these things and He's establishing a fact that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is more than capable of resurrecting us on the day of judgment and that's why the believer is one who believes in the Day of Judgment, believes in the Resurrection, believes in the accountability and the judgment on that day so, and those who actually deny it and reject its occurrence, they have no ounce of Iman, no ounce of belief within them. انتهت تفسير هذه السورة ونتأدب بأدب الإيمان باليوم الآخر من آمن باليوم الآخر كان صادقا مع الله صادقا مع الناس يعلم أنه سيقف بين يدي الله تبارك وتعالى فيعمل حياته للآخرة نسأل الله العظيم رب الأشعر العظيم أن يجعلنا من أهل الآخرة إنه لي ذلك مولا آمين and just to conclude this inshallah then we are of the people of Iman inshallah so it's very important that we know that we are going to stand in front of Allah so we have to be truthful with Allah we have to be truthful with the people we have to be just in our dealings and this in concludes um, the, the explanation or the tafsir of these ayat and now as you're all aware the lines are open inshallah so we will take our first caller to either recite from these 16 verses inshallah or to actually recite the metan or to ask us a qu question pertaining to uh, this surah inshallah the number to call in is 0203 5150769 you can call in now and recite from this surah inshallah surah nabat on 0203 5150769. Alternatively, you can call us on the WhatsApp number, and that is 0742239883, inshallah. Either of these platforms that you call us on, you can recite from the surah. And remember that when you call in and you recite, that you will get the reward of all those who are listening to you, and you'll get the reward of all those that learn from your mistakes and that implement the advice that the Sheikh would give you when calling in inshallah. So please don't be shy. This platform is for you all to learn at home and it's one in which we hope you would all enjoy and indulge in the delight of reciting the Quran and actually being corrected. And this is something that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do when he would recite to the Archangel Gabriel. He would recite on a one-to-one -one basis inshallah and here you have a platform of Sheikh Shu'aib Ali one who has you know knows the Qiraat al-Ashar one who knows the 10 various modes of recitation and he knows the field of Quran and its science uh, deeply so call us in on 0203 515 0769 inshallah that's 0203 
515-0769 inshallah and we'd ask just because we're going to go for a break we're going to ask for uh, Sheikh for perhaps some words from yourself inshallah Sheikh um, just to perhaps encourage those at home who are maybe feeling shy not confident enough to recite from this surah يستحون انهم يقرؤون نحن نقول اولا الله عز وجل تعبدنا بان نقرا القران بطريقه جيده وصحيحه والسبيل هو التعليم فلا يجد احد حرج من ان يتصل ويتحدث ويسال لان الله عز وجل سيسالنا يوم القيامه عن هذا الدين واذا كان هناك شيء متاح في السؤال والتعلم فلا بد ان نتعلم ونسال so the Shaykh mentioned that, um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he made reading the Quran an act of worship an act of worship in which we are rewarded for reciting it an act of worship in which we are required to learn it so we shouldn't uh, try and shy away from this but rather we should know inshallah that that for a believer if he wants to ask something or he wants to seek some knowledge then within his characteristics or something that should be find found within his traits is that he should ask and he should seek knowledge and he should learn and as well we're going to focus on some of the rules that we've learned within these 16 verses so we'll ask for Sheikh Shu'aib Ali to recite these verses again once for us inshallah A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عما يتساءلون عن النبأ العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات ألفافا جزاكم الله خيرا شيخ من الله bless you and raise your ranks we would like to welcome a particular caller, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're live on the Alif Lam Yim show. What is your name and where are you calling from? My name, my name is called Fatima and I'm calling from London. Uh, may Allah bless you, Fatima. You can recite when you're ready from Surah Naba. A'udhu billahi binash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can you put the volume down on the TV whilst reciting, please, Fatima? Is that okay? Yep. Thank you very much. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Amma tasa'alun. Adin naba'il azim. Alladhi hum fihi muqtalifun.
وبنينا فوقهم سبعا شدادا إذ فاطمة فوقكم كم فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وأن وأنزلنا من المؤسرات ما أنسد وجنات ألفا فا وجنات الفافا بيرفكت جزاك الله خيرا يا فاطمه فقط تعتني بمخرج العين العين دائما تبدلها همزه اؤذ اما لكن قراءتها طيبه فتحتاج ان تتدرب على مخرج العين وهو من الحروف العربيه التي ليست في اللغه الانجليزيه So just some advice for yourself inshallah Fatima uh, good recitation just focus on you need to practice the articulation point of ain specifically you're mixing it up with hamza so you said amma yatasa'alun when it should be amma amma yatasa'alun also you said a'udhu when it should be a'udhu so just the ain focus on that and uh, on that particular letter inshallah and any other letters just the articulation points and how do you pronounce them correctly inshallah thank you very much fatima for calling in uh, sheikh are there any common mistakes that people make when within reciting these ayat of surah naba eh naam huwa daiman al khata al mutakarrar fi makhraj al ayn alladhi anta nabahta alayh ana uhib an astakhraj ba'd al ahkam allati akhadna hadha mumkin naam ha nazar law fatahna aya raqam 13 so so if we can get, uh, inshallah, just so we can make it interactive for everyone at home, just explaining the rules that we've learned in Tuhfatul Atfal, in the Metin, the Tajweed segment, segment, the first segment of the show. So we can get the verses on the screen in Arabic, specifically verse 13 and or, or, or any of the verses around 13, just so we could focus on a particular rule that we've learned, inshallah. So we can get verses um, 11 to 16 and we'll focus on the verse 13. So if you're at home, you can get your Qur'ans ready and you can look at verse 13 of this particular surah inshallah so please have a look at this particular verse and the sheikh would describe and explain to us a particular rule uh, uh, within this ayah specifically inshallah لو ينفع يضعون هذا inshallah ayah 13 ayah 13 number 13 قول الله عز وجل وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا number 13 Number 13 وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا سراجا وهاجا ما هو الحكم هنا سراجا تنوين بعد التنوين حرف الواو إذا تنوين نون زائدة بعدها حرف الواو أصبح الحكم إدغام بغنة لأن الواو من حروف ينمو هذه هو الواو وطريقة نطقها لا نقول سراجا وهاجا إنما نقول سراجا وهاجا سراجا وهاجا So inshallah to explain this if you look at the verse 13 so you see the number 13 and then you go straight back so it's سراجا وهاجا so وأنزلنا من المعصرات and then it, so it's not after that it's one before that وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا so on that particular verse inshallah um, sirajan, there's a tanween there. Now, immediately after that tanween, there is a wow. Now, first thing we need to know is that sirajan is one word and wa is another word. So, firstly, it falls in line with the rule of idgham. Now we have to check if there is a letter of idgham after the tanween. So, immediately after the jen, the tanween on the jim, there is a wow. So, yes, it is one of the letters of yarmaloon. But more specifically, it's one of the letters of idgham that have ghunna, yanmu. So it should be recited, so we join it first, so sirajaw. But not only do we join it, we actually focus on the ghunna as well. So we hold it for two harakat. So we say sirajaw wahaja. 
So we hold it for two harakat and that is an example of idgham with gunna. We'd like to welcome another call of the show inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is your name and where are you calling from? Wa alaikum as May Allah bless you. How are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. How are you? Fine, thanks. May Allah raise your ranks. You can recite when you are ready, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل أتاك حديث الغاشية؟ Can you recite سورة النبأ? No, I don't have it. Oh, you don't have it. Oh, okay. Where are you reading? Are you reading from your mind at the moment? From from your from the without looking no. at the mushaf? I'm reading from my amma. But some of the pages are missing. That's okay. Okay, no problem. If you can, perhaps, uh, dear brother, if you can, we're going to go for a break now. But inshallah, if you can call us back with that page, or even if you have it on an application on your phone or an iPad at home, to read that particular surah, that would be uh, more suitable for the show, inshallah, just because we've been practicing that and we want to focus solely on that segment of, of, of the, the Quran, inshallah. That would be great, inshallah. Is that okay? Jazakumullah khairan, thank you very much inshallah, so please do call us back for that inshallah. We're actually going to go for another break inshallah, but just before that, let us go through the example as well, the Sheikh mentioned on the board of Ayah 13 inshallah, that Siraja wa So just to clarify, this is Ghunna, Idgham bi Ghunna, Idgham with Ghunna. Why? Because immediately after the Jeem, on top of the Jeem there's a Tenween, so immediately after the Tenween there comes a well. And Wa is one of the letters of Idram, and it is one of the letters of Yan Mu, specifically one of the four letters of Wunna of the Idram category. So for that reason, we join the Tenween to the Wa, and we apply Wunna. So we read it Sirajawahaja, and we'd like to go straight into our callers reading from Surah Naba. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is your name and where are you calling from? Wa alaikum assalam. May Allah bless you. You can recite when you are ready. Uh, is it from the start of the surah? From Surah Nabat. Yeah, from the start. Yes, and to verse 16. From the start to 16. وَجَنَّاتٍ okay. أَلْفَافَ Finish. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ عَمَّ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ عن النبأ العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتًا وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاتًا وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَاجًا وَأَنْزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَاءً سَجَّاجًا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات الفافا ما شاء الله الله العظيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله good recitation beautiful voice صوت جميل وأحكام منضبطة والإضغامات جاء بها على ما يرام أنصحه أن يعلم القرآن غيره وأن يحرص على أن يأخذ إجازة وأن يكمل القرآن إن لم يكن حافظا فقراءته طيبة وأحسبه إن شاء الله في المستقبل يكون إماما من أئمة الصلاة بإذن الله أمين ما شاء الله beautiful recitation from yourself amazing voice amazing recitation your rules pertaining to this particular surah especially the idrams were complete there was no mistakes and the Sheikh says that he hopes that you can actually teach the Quran in the future and he hopes inshallah that if you haven't memorized the Quran that you should memorize the Quran and that you should pursue to obtain an ijazah, a, 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 a certificate that gives you a, a 
classification of you linking yourself back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam having learned the Quran in a chain that links back to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so Jazakallah Khairan we'd like to welcome our next caller of the show inshallah Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh what is your name and where are you calling from? Assalamu Alaikum you're live on the Alif Lam Mim show how are you? Everything okay? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You can recite when you're ready, inshallah, sister. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Amma yatasa'aloon Anin naba'i al-azim الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وجعلنا نومكم سبعا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء سجاجا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات ألفافا ما شاء الله جزاك الله خيرا What's the role for لنخرج به حبا ونباتا دعا بغنة Perfect جنات الفافة الفافة بارك الله فيك ما شاء الله هي قراءة منضبطة أصلا فيبدو أن فيه ما شاء الله يعني بارك الله في من علمك القرآن الكريم أمين أمين ما شاء الله your recitation is one which is great amazing and he asks Allah to bless whomever taught you the Quran إن شاء الله تعالى and of course he asks you a question pertaining to حبوا ونباتا what was the ruling and you said yes is إضغام غنا and of course جنات الفافا and you said إظهار so ما شاء الله you're learning I'm sure you already know this but I'm sure ما شاء الله you're engaging with us and you're reciting to the Sheikh himself I'm sure you know his value and his caliber we'd like to welcome our next caller of the show إن شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته what is your name and where are you calling from وعليكم السلام I'm from London ما شاء الله you can go ahead and recite when you're ready إن شاء الله can my mom recite after me, inshallah? Yeah, yes, she can indeed, inshallah. Would, um, would you want your mom to recite first or are you going to recite first? No, I'll recite first. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So maybe if you can recite um, uh, eight verses and your mom maybe can recite the other eight verses, would that be a bit difficult or is that doable? No, that's doable, inshallah. Excellent, great. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عما يتساءلون عن النبأ العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا والجبال أوتادا Excellent. Your mother can recite the remaining verses, inshallah, then we'll give you uh, uh, and some advice. وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وحاجا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء فجاجا 
لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات الفافا جزاك الله خيرا ما شاء الله أصلا يبارك فيك وفي ابنتك ويجعلها في ميزان حسناتك يوم القيامة وجعلها قرة عين لك قراءات منضبطة ما شاء الله تبارك وتعالى Mashallah, uh, may Allah bless you both. May Allah raise both your ranks. Your, both your recitations were uh, excellent. There was no mistakes. The rules of, of the Tajweed were intact. And wallahi, it brings us great pleasure actually seeing, you know, uh, a daughter alongside the mother reciting, you know, sharing the recitation. And it shows, mashallah, that wallahi, may Allah bless you both and give you the highest ranks in Jannah and bless your your child as well, inshallah, and, and, and actually grant her a long life full of khair and yourself, inshallah ta'ala. We'd like to welcome our last caller of the show, bidillahi ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is your name and where are you calling from? Abdurrahim. MashaAllah, you can recite when you're ready, Abdurrahim. A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. سيعلمون <تصفيق> Okay, can you say Wajaalna? Wajaalna. Yes. وجعلنا سراجا وحاجة سراجا وحاجة إدغام وذغنا سراجا وحاجة وأنزلنا من المحصنات وأنزلنا وأنزلنا من المحصنات ما أنسجاجا لنخرج به هكم ونباتا Thanks a lot to our dear brother and everyone watching at home, inshallah, for the recitations from all yourselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise your ranks. We'd like to thank our Sheikh today, Sheikh Shu'aib Ali, and we would like to send our du'as and our salute, uh, our du'as and our prayers to our brothers and sisters who have passed away in New Zealand, specifically in Christchurch regarding the atrocity that took place on Jum'ah. May Allah raise their ranks and grant them good in this life and the next and make them uh, inherit the loftiest palaces of the Jannah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Join us next week for the Alif Lam Meme Show at 7.30. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alif Lam ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين